Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the one bed trope. Baby, baby. I know that everybody loves this trope. I, I don't know anybody who doesn't love this trope. Everybody loves a good one bed trope. If you don't know what this trope is, it's basically a trope where like the characters in here are stuck somewhere in a room in an inn anywhere and there's only one bed and they have to share it. I'm, I'm a sucker for it, complete sucker for it. Um, it started with um, A Court of Mist and Fury because that scene was amazing. <laughs> so I have 10 recommendations for you today, so let's get started. First, we have My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. This is the romance between Alexander and Kitty. So Kitty has a bunch of younger sisters, but during this time period, um, the younger sisters could not be introduced to society until the older sister was married. And so Kitty just has believe that she's gonna be a spinster. So she makes up this rumor that she's actually engaged to the town recluse named Alexander. And um, Alexander gets wind of this and he's like, who's this woman making up rumors about me? I'm not engaged to somebody. So he comes out of hiding for the first time in a very long time. Um, and right when he sees Kitty, he's like, hmm, I'm actually interested in her. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play up this ruse for a little bit. Let, let's play up this ruse a little bit. And so the two of them actually get stuck in a cabin together at one point in this book and they have to share a bed. And this scene is very memorable to a lot of people, trust me. Alexander also in here um, is a wheelchair user and he also is a crutch user. Is that the correct terminology? Correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody who also uses crutches to help them walk. The forced proximity part in here is the part that had me like swooning and um, <laughs> The one bed trope in here was honestly something that everyone needs to read. The scene where they're in the cabin is amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Next, we have another historical where they're like stuck in a cabin together. Um, we have The Highlanders Forbidden Bride by Donna Fletcher. So this is the last book in the Sinclair Brothers series. And this is a Highlander series where um, our uh, hero in here, he is the, I think, youngest brother, Ronan, of the Sinclair Brothers. And throughout the, re throughout the beginning books, I recommend reading these books in order. So the first three books, his brothers are trying to find him because he's missing. Turns out he's captured by an enemy and um, he ends up escaping that enemy, but he ends up kidnapping his enemy's daughter um, for revenge and keeping her in this cabin. Um, and they have to live together in this cabin while he's like keeping her prisoner. And um, there's only one bed and they do have to share it at one point. <laughs> this one is full of angst and tension and is definitely enemies to lovers. And I also love good one bed trope, especially when they are enemies to lovers. So um, this one was just filled with tension and angst and I, I loved it. I loved it. Next we have a Royally Matched by Emma Chase, one of my favorite romance books of all time. I do recommend reading these books in order though. This is the second book in a series and um, the second book starts out with the repercussions of the end of book one. Even though book one centers around a different couple, uh, book two is very heavily affected by the occurrences in book one, if that makes sense. So this is a royalty romance series. Uh, Prince Henry is our hero, um, who is the brother to the guy from book one. And he has decided to do matched royally edition, royal, royal edition, <laughs> which is kind of like the bachelor, but with a prince. Um, and the ladies have to be like um, high ladies in society because there's like a, a law about a prince marrying like a well-to-do highborn lady, whatever. And so the ladies on the show have to fill those qualifications. And so everyone there knows like he's not actually gonna marry these people, any of these people. Um, he just wants um, to have some fun. And so does everybody else there. So Penelope is one of the contestants on this show and um, she brings along her sister, Sarah, to be her companion, but Sarah is not a contestant on the show. She's just there to keep her sister company. And so this is the romance between Prince Henry and Sarah. And Sarah, Sarah is everything. She is me. Like Sarah is me. If you ever wanna know who I am as a person, it is Sarah in this book. I don't know how Emma Chase wrote me as a character, but it is, it is Sarah. So they're staying in this castle while they're shooting the um, show. So the camera crew ended up putting like a camera in Henry's room um, by like contract and he can always hear like the cameras like moving and turning and he can't fall asleep. And so he um, walks up to Sarah's room and is like, can I sleep in your room? You're not gonna have any cameras in your room because we're not in the show. And she's like, um, okay. There's also this little like, not battle, but um, fight of who's going to um, not take the bed or not. So like at first, 
um, she's like, oh, I'm just gonna sleep on the like uh, window seat. And he's like, no, you shouldn't do that. She's like, no, I don't, I don't want to sleep in a bed. It's with you. It's fine. Cause he's like, we'll share the bed. And she's like, no, I don't really want to do that. So um, she's sitting on the window seat and then he's like tossing and turning in bed after a couple minutes and is like, oh, get up. I'm going to trade with you. You're going to sleep in the bed. I'm not going to make you sleep on the window seat. And so then they trade places. She gets in the bed and then he's on the window seat and he's like tossing and turning in the window seat. She's like, fine, you can sleep in the bed with me. <laughs> and it is so cute. I love that scene. And so throughout the rest of their like filming there, they end up sharing the bed and the room together um, because Henry doesn't really have anywhere else to sleep that doesn't have noises that will wake him up, you know? But this is definitely one of my favorite romance books of all time and I really, really, really recommend it. Next type, another historical for you. We have A Week to Be Wicked by Tessa Nair. This is the second book in the, uh, not Castles Ever After, the Spindle Cove series. So our heroine in here is a, like, female paleontologist, um, which is very rare back in the day, um, to be recognized as that. And so she loves science and fossils and all that stuff. And so our hero here has agreed to go on this journey with her to go to a paleontologist um, like convention. But the only issue is like he doesn't ride in carriages because um, he was very traumatized as a child by I think um, his parents dying and him being the only survivor of a carriage crash. They have to like think of unique ways to travel across the country um, because he cannot be in a carriage. This one is super fun. I love the banter and bickering <laughs> between the two characters. They do have to stay at some inns in this book. And so you have the uh, one bed trope in an inn because at some points they have to pretend to be married because like in, back in society, like you couldn't really hang around and be alone with a man if you were a woman or else you'd be forced to marry him and you'd be ruined. And so they have to like pretend to be married so they can um, stay in the same room together and travel together. This one is just so fun. If you're in for a fun road trip romance that takes place in a historical romance, this is it. Next, I have Sworn to the Shadow God by Ruby Dixon. This is the second book in the Aspect and Anchor series. I do recommend reading these books in order just because um, the world building can be quite complicated if you just head dive into this one. But this is her long series, not long series, her long books. These are like over 600 pages. So the series is about human women who are from Earth, from our time, um, who end up getting sucked through a portal and end up winding up in this fantasy land. And in this fantasy land, there's like gods and there's like the ruler of all the gods, the father of all the gods. And he like casts out his children from kind of like think of Olympus. It's not Olympus though. He casts out his children to have them learn a lesson. And his children who are gods can't live on the mortal plane without a mortal anchoring them. And so our heroine in here becomes the anchor to this God to anchor him to the world. And there is a few scenes in here where the two of them do have to share a bed together, even though they do not want to. Um, he is actually the God of death. And so they get, this gives me a lot of um, Hades vibes. So um, if you want to read about a Hades-esque character, I'd really check this one out. Next I have Misadventures of a City Girl by Meredith Wilde. This is the first book in the Misadventures series. I'm still currently like reading this series. These are all books written by different authors that are like short, contemporary, hot novellas. Um, and my audiobook service has like all of them. So whenever I'm feeling slumpy or don't know what to listen to, I'll just check out one of these books. But some of them are hits, some of them are misses. I feel like this is a definite hit. Our heroine decides to like go vacation in the mountains after a divorce, like a bad divorce that she's had. And she finds these hot springs, these natural hot springs and decides to go for a dip in them. And then this guy walks up and sees her and he's like, what are you doing on my property? Like, or close to his property. Um, like the spring is uh, right next to his like cabin in the mountains. They get stuck in a snowstorm together in the mountains in his cabin. And there's only one bed in the cabin. They might seek some relief from each other during this snowstorm. This one's super hot and super fun. And um, I feel like the one bed trope in here is kind of glossed over a little bit because um, the two of them are already like, doing stuff you know but it's okay it's super fun and there is a one bed in here so i consider it a one bed trip <laughs> next time when she belongs by ruby dixon oh my gosh this is one of my favorite alien romance books of all time and one of my favorite ruby dixons of all time this is the epitome of a grumpy sunshine romance um so if you love alien romance if you love grumpy sunshine please check this one out this is the romance between sophie and jerrock and um, you've met Sophie in some of the previous Rizdiverse books. This is the fourth book in the series, by the way. And she has been left on this abandoned asteroid with the only other inhabitant is Jurek, 
who is a very damaged war alien alien war veteran. The two of them end up traveling around space together very reluctantly um and while they're like traveling they have to share the same cabin um and same room on a spaceship and they have only one bed together this is one of my favorite alien romance books of all time and i'm so sad that not a lot of people have read it because it is worth it it is totally 100 percent thousand percent worth it next i have people we meet on vacation by emily henry this is the romance between poppy and alex and when they were in college they were very close friends um, and they would go on vacations together all the time. However, it is years later and Poppy and Alex do not speak anymore and they are not friends. And so Poppy is kind of like down in the dumps and she realizes the last time she was really happy was the last time she went on vacation with Alex. And so she randomly calls him up one day and is like, do you want to go on one last vacation with me? And he agrees. And so they go on this one last vacation together and um, things get a little bit crazy. There's like an issue with the booking at the um, Airbnb that they're in or the hotel that they're in and um, there's only one room and there's only one bed and there's a bunch of other complications in the room too. Like the thermostat's broken. I think the window's broken. Like it's just a chaotic time for them, but they do have to share a bed together even though there's like this tension and like built up angst between the two of them. And so um, they're having to sort out their feelings. This book like ch jumps back and forth to like when they were friends to like present day and you have to figure out why um, they aren't friends anymore you know so yeah i really enjoy this one and i feel like it is worth the hype i know not a lot of people love this one but i personally did i love a good friends to lovers trope and i thought this one was really good next i have the christmas pact by uh vi keelan and penelope ward this is a great romance um for the christmas season but also not especially the audiobook if you have audible you need to check out this book it is very short <laughs> um and it's totally worth the read this is the romance between riley kennedy and kennedy riley i think they work at like sister companies and like emails kind of get sent to the wrong person all the time because it's their name but like flipped you know and by some means um they end up like fake dating um at each other's uh family gatherings during christmas time even though they don't really like each other all that much um but there is the tension and angst between the two of them and the attraction there's definitely an attraction there they get on each other's nerves a lot <laughs> um so at one point in this book i believe it's the hero the hero takes the heroine to his house like to be with his family like to show his family that he has a girlfriend whatever i think like they actually believe like they're together and so they get put in the same room and they have to stay in the same bed in the same room together or else the parents will figure out that they're not actually together and all this stuff um this one is really sweet and really cute and i feel like this is a great romance read um for any time of the year not just christmas and lastly i would like to mention bad guy by ruby dixon another ruby dixon book i feel like ruby does have um this trope a lot in some of her books. <laughs> so this is the romance between Cruelden and Mina. Mina is a human slave on this like space station and um, she is tasked to clean cells and she ends up cleaning up Cruelden's cell who is an alien who like is just mad at the world right now. He like just gets at his frustration by ripping everything up in his room, literally tears the sink out of the wall and Mina is sent to clean his room. And so he has like these cuffs on him that are magnetized to the wall and so people can come in without him attacking them, you know? Um, and so she's like cleaning up his cell while he's like stuck to this wall with magnets and she's like glaring at him, this tiny human woman glaring at this giant gladiator alien and it's like, don't do this anymore. I don't want to clean this up anymore and so he purposefully makes messes to come see to have her come see him there's one point in the book where Cruelton is not cooperating with the people who own him and um he says okay well i'll listen to you and cooperate with you if you give me mina if you let mina stay with me and so mina is put in his cell and um they have to sleep in the same bed together in this cell this one is just great it's one of my favorites so far in 2022 for sure so there you have it those are some romance books that have the one bed trope in them i just love this trope leave me any recommendations that you have for me down below please if you've made it this far in the video leave me a bed emoji obviously <laughs> but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all